What's going on, everybody? How you doing? Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast. Here we are. And here's Will. What's he doing? Well, what's he doing? Oh, hi. Didn't see you come in there. Uh, my name here. is Will Wolf. You might know me as the fat one from the Wolf Den Podcast. And I'm here to wish okay. you all a happy Alien Day. I hope you're celebrating oh. with your various alien merchandise, be it the comic books that you can get at your local comic book shop or even digitally online from such fine retailers as Comics. Sorry, not Comicsology. Amazon Kindle Comics. Also available is the video game Alien Isolation on PS4 or for this crowd, the Fantastic Switch port. Or of course, we can't forget the movie series that is currently not streaming anywhere because Disney would like you to forget that they own the rights to a movies about a sex monster. Hold on a second. Happy Alien Day. <laughs> Why is it Alien Day? Because uh, the first two movies take place on the planet LV426. Okay. And today is April 26th. Uh, wow. Yeah. So there you go. Amazing. Yes. I had no idea. Neither did I. <laughs> I, I saw about it. the first Alien one time. And I saw almost the whole movie on our buddy Greg's house. He was having a party mm -hmm. and it was on mute. But I oh. feel like well, I understood everything that happened. <laughs> so yes, because the first movie is very much a visual movie you could watch that movie with on mute and get the whole gist of it because quite honestly the sound mixing in that movie is atrocious it's it like, looked like nobody was talking for almost the whole movie well like there are scenes when like they're talking and the volume changes mid-sentence <laughs> That's not good. It's, it's, That's not good. It's honestly kind of amateurish, but like the rest <laughs> of the movie does make up for it. And to put it bluntly, the second movie is much better. Okay. So, and with the great thing about Al the Alien series is you only really need to watch two movies and then you you can be done. You don't have to do anything else. I was watching I do clips of I'm a, I'm a crazy Prometheus person. on Twitch the other uh, on on YouTube the other day. Yeah. That's my thing. I just that's... watch clips from movies. I don't watch whole movies. Prometheus is um uh choices were made. Uh they <laughs> certainly were made. Uh I wanna point I wanna call someone out in the chat. Uh where is it? I scroll I'm s i am I feel like I'm scrolling back to four. Lifted Lightning says Bob always seems to have problems with Twitch. I guess because the the starting soon screen ran a little late. I was making coffee and putting makeup on. <laughs> All right. You think you woke up like this? You think I woke up like this? Holy shit, dude. Takes a lot to look this beautiful. All right. Today we got a lot to talk about. You, you yes. pieces of shit guys in the stupid chat. We got to talk about, uh, for example, we got to talk about a, a whole lot of stuff about Sonic Origins. The yes. collection of Sonic games. Uh, first time we're getting Sonic 3 in over 10 years. Um, uh, one of the best games of all time here uh, here uh, yeah. at the Wolf Den. We certify it one of the best games of all time. Uh, we also have to talk about, of course, uh, the Mario movie got delayed. Yesterday, I was streaming, and so many people came into the chat. Did you hear the Mario movie got delayed? <laughs> Like like I uh, like I don't have a direct line to Miyamoto. He called me first. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he called you to uh, proofread the tweet. Yeah, exactly. I'm the one who told him he should start the tweet with, "This is Miyamoto." <laughs> <laughs> also, Joy-Con repair centers are being overwhelmed. Whoa, they're being overrun with with Joy-Con help. Uh, Splatoon's coming out and a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, but before we get into that, we have to thank some people. For example, mm -hmm. uh, well, there's a lot of you. GCXC Luke Dex for 13 months. Hey, Bob, I can't believe you wore a blue apron during a HelloFresh ad and got away with it. It was green. What's wrong with you? Are you? Are Wait, you was it blue? It's green. Someone's going to have to put a screenshot of that up somewhere. I'm going to just look it up right now. Uh, 
We also have Razzle Jazzle, thanks for the 19 months. And we got Ariana, thanks for the 15 months. And Smash Bryman, thanks for the eight months. Where's my apron? Okay, all right. It looks kind of blue. It looks kind of blue. <laughs> I can confirm the. That's because of the of the a color grading, but I can confirm that is a green apron. It's 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 like a Starbucks knockoff apron. Okay. Um. Anyway, Irv, thanks for the eleven months. Almost one whole ass year. Bob, hurry and get an air fryer. All right, dude. I'm about to marry I mean, into one. You absolutely should. Also, we're going to go back to that at the end of this podcast. Oh, no. Air fryers? <laughs> uh, Jinx, thanks for the five <laughs> the 5,000 bits. All right. Okay. All right. I'm worried now. 5,000 bits is a lot of bits. Thank you, Jinx. Yes, I don't know what we did you. to deserve this, but I appreciate it. Uh. Uh, we also got Dog Like Mammal. Thank you for the Prime subscription. Jinx with another 600 bits. Thank you very much. Uh, jump in, this, this stream brought to you by Jinx. And Jumping Bear, thank you for the three months. Celeste, greater than Sonic and Mario combined. Uh, uh, you might not be wrong there. Yeah. Uh, well, mm. no, you're wrong, but <laughs> points for trying. A for effort, really. Uh, all right. Let's get right into it here with sonic origins we have a date now so if you don't know what what will yes. tell everybody what sonic origins is please sonic origins is a compilation of the first four sonic games that's the original genesis uh sonic series and uh sonic cd on the sega cd so it is a compilation of sonic one sonic two sonic three and knuckles that's one game and sonic cd <laughs> it is the first time in years all of these games have been collected into one uh, collection, and it's the first time in over a decade that Sonic 3 Knuckles has been released. Uh, and all the games are getting fancy updates and whatnot to make it more more modern, but still that classic Sonic style, I guess you could say. Uh, so. Yeah, so again, this is the first time that we're getting Sonic 3 in a really long time, presumably because of copyright issues. That's uh, the that's always been the go-to theory. It's the most plausible theory. Um because as we all know, Michael Jackson had a hand in the making of the music for Sonic 3. Um and it's believed that Sega owes him or now his estate some money when it comes to releasing that game. Yeah, or something's up. There, there's always there's there's been like this urban legend that uh that uh, uh, Michael Jackson worked on the music for Sonic 3 that has been since confirmed but like it's still weird what, like and hazy like what his involvement actually was uh, yeah. but it seems like that's the reason why we haven't seen that game in a really long time because it's it's one of the the it's probably the best Sonic game of all time and it hasn't been re-released much and when it is re-released sometimes they do it without the music so and the music's one of the best parts the music it has one of the best yeah. soundtracks of all time also uh so this being included in the sonic origins collection is a huge deal i have to pause for a second and we have to thank okay. jinx again because they gifted yeah. 50 whole goddamn subs that's Jeez. a lot of subs <laughs> what have we done jinx yeah <laughs> You guys deserve it. Would do anything to help support the channel. Thank you very much, Jinx. Thank I you. very much appreciate Thank it. You. Guys, if you're listening on the podcast, uh, if you know, if you don't want to watch us live, that's totally fine. But if you go to twitch.tv slash wolfden, you can drop a, a free Prime subscription if you have Amazon Prime. Whenever you want. We don't even have to be yep. live. Uh, and that that's all you need to do to support the channel. Uh, or rate us on iTunes and leave a comment or whatever. Um, or you could be Jinx and gift 50 whole goddamn subs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway. All right. Uh, so, yeah, this Sonic Origins is a big deal to me because we're finally getting Sonic 3 again. But there's, like, yes. a lot of different, like, upgrades and stuff. So it's not just, like, vanilla Sonic 3. There's, like, a whole yes. s s bunch of stuff going on. So let's let's, re let's start with the Engadget article. Okay. Uh, 
Never mind the movies and the endless spinoffs. Uh, Second knows you want to replay the classic 2D Sonic the Hedgehog games, and it's ready to deliver. The company has announced that its Sonic Origins collection will debut June 23rd on PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, and Nintendo Switch. The $40 standard standard edition will include remasters of Sonic 1, 2, 3 and & Knuckles, and Sonic CD, while the $45 deluxe edition adds difficulty missions, exclusive music, and cosmetics. Uh, every game has been remastered. Every game has remastered graphics and other enhancements for modern hardware. You can play all of them as they were originally intended, including the old aspect ratio. But you can also experiment with oh. features and modes that were never available on your Genesis or Mega Drive if you live in a country that's not the good old US of A. Uh, you can play as Sonic, Tails, or Knuckles in any of the games. And an anniversary mode brings in a widescreen aspect ratio with infinite lives. You can earn medallions to unlock content by completing missions. Uh, this won't satisfy completionists. Uh, where where are the remasters for the 32x title uh, Knuckles Chaotix? Uh, if you can, if you can forgive that oversight, though, this may be the easiest way to indulge in your nostalgia or introduce kids to the other iconic platformer of the 16-bit generation. I have so, seen a lot of memes like "What about Knuckles Chaotix?" and that is that is true. That is still to this day the one uh, Sonic game from that era that they've never re-released. But I would love to play that game. Uh, that's what the one that I've never played. I would love yeah. to play that. Um, one thing to note about this trailer: beautiful animation. Yes. Uh, people always yell. So, like sometimes in my videos, I always have to make things about myself. You know that. Sometimes in yeah. my videos, I like to mix frame rates, and people when they he when they see the videos, nobody cares. But when they hear hear that I do that, I get yelled at. But really, all I'm doing is filming the live video at 24 frames per second and then having gameplay that's 60 frames per second. It's really not right. a big deal. It's to it totally looks fine. This trailer yeah. is 60 frames per second. All of the motion graphics are 60 frames per second. All of the gameplay is 60 frames per second, but the animation is like 12 because that's what animation that's what animation yeah. is. And it is a little jarring <laughs> when you're looking at the animation <laughs> and then it cuts to the, to the motion graphic. Yeah. But I think this trailer is gorgeous. And uh, that's just how it's got to be. If you're going to show gameplay yeah. and then also have the hand-drawn animation, it's going to have to mm -hmm. be like that. Yeah. Anyway, um, I didn't know that you can go back to the 4 by 3 aspect ratio. Yeah, so there's going to be two modes. There's going to be the classic mode, which is the, the classic 4 by 3 aspect ratio, uh, and the live system. And then anniversary mode is going to be the widescreen format as we saw in the iOS release of Sonic 1, 2 and Sonic CD, um, as well as no live system. You can even see it in the trailer in the bottom corner. Instead of lives, it's coins that you can, I guess, collect and redeem for like bonus content. Wait, whatnot. hold on. Are you saying I can't just flick on the 4x3 mode? It's a whole separate mode. It's the classic. It's, it's, it's classic the way the mode. game was originally intended to be played. Correct. That's totally Correct. fine. I'm glad that they're doing that. Yeah. I thought this yeah. was just gonna have the enhancements and that's all you get. But I'm glad you could no, play the game as originally both. intended. It but is I'm like, gonna wanna play it like it's Sonic Mania though. I'm gonna wanna right. play it with the enhancements because those that's just freaking awesome. I don't know if I want the infinite lives though. That I that's, mean I know that modern what... games have like better life systems than we used to have in the past because yeah. games used to be harder, but I I want it to I want to be able to play through it like I used to just maybe give me the widescreen, you know? Yeah, like that's the thing like Sonic Forces, Sonic Colors Ultimate and now this like don't have live systems and after spending, you know, almost 30 years playing Sonic games the exact same way, now all of a sudden you're changing it up. That's like that's something I have to get used to. <laughs> that's a yeah. me problem, but I don't know if I like having this problem. Yeah, I mean, like, you, back in the day, you used to have just a couple lives, and then you have to start the whole damn game over again, and a lot of people didn't beat games because, I mean, back then, people were beating games because it's the only thing that you had, but it yeah. made games progressively more difficult the farther into the game that you got. Yeah. Um, at least Sonic 3 had saves, but... Yeah. Uh, these days, a lot of games that, that mimic retro styles, they have a lot more checkpoints and maybe no lives. 
So yeah, uh, I'd understand why there would be a mode like that, but I'd yeah. like to be and, able and I to feel play like... it with the widescreen and turn that off. Yeah, I, I feel like, you know, having infinite lives in anniversary mode of, uh, you know, because if if you think if you're good enough at Sonic, you'll you'll never have to worry about that. You'll you'll collect enough lives throughout the course of the game to, you know, not have this problem. So right. it's just it's just bringing novices, I guess you could say, up to the level, like up up a level, not like pro level, but like just up a level. What do you think about the guys who say that Sonic has a lot of bullshit? Like you'll be running really fast and you'll just hit a spike wall. Uh, get good. <laughs> I don't think that's a thing, honestly. I think that, uh, yeah, you'll run into an enemy, but if you're just balled up, you're gonna plow through that enemy. Yeah, get. I good. don't think there's a. That's, I don't think there's that's a, what it is. I don't think there's a it's, moment in Sonic Three where you will just hit a spike wall. I don't think that happens. Yeah. People like to say that oh, Sonic games—they're—they're they're not, you know, they're—they're they're artificially challenging. You know, they—they they put enemy, you know, they put enemies in random places. Like, no, everything has a place. You know, you play the game enough to memorize everything and, get, and increase your reflexes. That's every NES game, and that's a majority of SNES games. That's mm -hmm. a majority of video games from that era. Sonic is not doing anything different than Mega Man, than Mario, than Castlevania, than all all the games of its similar style. So people who say that like, oh, Sonic is, you know, unfairly difficult. Sonic has a lot of like things that, you know, just jump out at you and insta kill you or like ruin your speed or whatever. Shut up. Play the game. <laughs> get good. Get over yourself. I also, when I play Sonic, I don't full send it the whole time. I... I mm -mm. I play it just like a regular platform. I play it like I would play Mario. Mario right. also runs very fast, but he wasn't yes. marketed as a speedster, you know? He's just a he's plumber that jumps and drops people's heads yeah. and stuff. If you play Mario holding B and holding right the whole time, you're going to hit an enemy at some point. I yeah. I play Sonic if I'm if I'm going through like a really fast area that I have no control over, I'm balling up so I don't hit anything. But for the most part, I'm trying to take it relatively slow so that I can see what's coming up so I can jump over it or avoid it or whatever. So right. it's just a damn platformer. I don't think it's it's as contingent on the speed as it's like marketed to be. I think that if you just play it like a normal platformer, you'll understand that it's one of the best platformers of all time. Yeah. And Tech Niner okay. says the widescreen version will help so you can see further ahead. That's, That's true. true. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm interested in how that will affect uh, the gameplay. Mm -hmm. It is weird when you're playing like the Game Gear version because Sonic is huge. <laughs> and, like, yeah, there's Sonic's like no huge, room like, on the screen at all. Your, yeah, your field of view is like non existent. <laughs> yeah. As oh. Silent Mongoose says, old Sonic games are more about momentum than speed, anyways. I think that it feels True. good to have that speed, but I'll say it again. I think if you just play it slow, like a normal platformer, and sometimes there's like moments where like you go really fast and you don't really have control over it. It's just like you go into like a like a fast thing and it just shoots you out. But like yeah. for the most part, if you play it like a regular old platformer, not trying to plow through the whole thing, I think you're going to have a much better time with it. Well, also too, like, uh he's right though it, it is very momentum based because like you can as you're going up a hill if you don't have full speed you'll struggle to go up that hill whereas right you know as you go down the hill you'll gain more speed and if you curl into a ball you'll go even faster when you get to the loop de loops if you're not at full speed you can't go up it so yeah it that momentum adds to the platforming it helps yeah. it helps you like go through the game easier I, I mostly take it carefully, and then sometimes you do hit an area where you need the momentum, and then you just go back and you get the momentum, or you just spin dash, or yeah. you figure it out. A lot of times, if you don't have the momentum, there's just a different path. So that's another reason why I think Sonic is one of the best platformers, is that there's always multiple paths and weird and winding ways you can complete the level. Yeah. So you could play the game over and over again and always find new stuff. Yeah. So... Uh, if you've never played Sonic 3 before, this is your chance. It's fucking awesome. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of controversy around this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, was that the whole article? The whole end gadget article? That was the whole article, yes. 
Um, All right, now we should talk about the weird and wacky way you could buy the damn game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so almost immediately when they announced uh, when the game's coming out, and they announced the uh, the standard edition and the deluxe edition, like we said before. Um, and this is per IGN. Sonic Origins release date and editions are announced, uh, and fans are not happy with the amount of locked-off DLC, including the game's hard missions, camera controls on elements of the main menu, and character animations while playing music. Uh, the remastered collection of Sonic 1, 2, 3, and Knuckles and CD has eight pieces of content not included in the standard edition and spread across a number of different editions and DLC packs. According to the Sonic Origins website, hard missions, mirror mode, uh, being unlocked, and even certain animations and music are all locked behind DLC packs at launch. And here you can see the stupid chart. Uh, this is not a big, most... confusing chart. People it made very simplified confusing. versions of this chart. Uh, yeah. This was officially tweeted by Sega, wasn't it? Like, it was, they uh, made this and they were like, this is going to be helpful this, to people. This was officially put on the Sonic Origins website. This is so yes, this is, this is a sec. This is an official Sega marketing tool. Somebody should not have seen even this most, and been like, "This is a terrible idea." <laughs> not even the most expensive digital deluxe edition automatically comes with everything, as fans will also need to pre-order the collection in order to tick off every piece of DLC. So even if you get the deluxe edition, if you don't pre-order it specifically, you're not necessarily getting everything. So 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 if you if you get the digital deluxe edition you're missing uh the 100 bonus coins you're missing mirror mode it says mirror mode unlocked that sounds like you can unlock it in the game though yes yeah, some of some of these things like are you have to unlock in the game but if you pre-order it you'll get it you know right out the gate i feel like they just shouldn't have said that just le this yeah. is a damn this is a stupid chart uh the other thing you're missing is letterboxed background <laughs> which all right yeah so that's another thing some of the is like perks and whatnot confuse the shit out of me yeah like what is a letterbox background I, I know what letterboxing is but what what does that have to do with this game? wait yeah, yeah do it you, should be do pill you boxed mean... Yeah, it's pill yeah, if you're talking about the wallpaper that is on the left and right hand side of the classic mode, the four by three aspect ratio Sonic games, that's pillar boxing. So is that just a misprint? Or is a letterbox background something different? And why don't you already have letterbox backgrounds in the game? Because <laughs> yeah, usually I'm collections like this have letterbox backgrounds. I'm very confused. <laughs> like so what the and what the fuck is character animation in the main menu? <laughs> yeah, I guess behind... Seriously? So is that pre-order? Is the character animation a pre-order thing? That's in the premium fun pack. <laughs> and I guess the, the digital deluxe edition. That means but that like, the, 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 the main menu won't have moving characters. <laughs> and and camera controls over the main menu islands? Like, what what is that? So So... so... So letterboxing is the top and the bottom. Yeah. Pillar boxing what. is the sides, is the which side. you'll get if you yeah. play in four by three. Yeah. So do they mean pillar boxing? And are there just going to be black bars unless you pre-ordered the game and then they'll put fun designs on the sides? I, I don't know. They <laughs> the, the, thing is, the thing that you need to remember is Sega has not clarified any of this. Right. Uh, well... So, the fans came at, out with uh, a simplified version of the chart. Uh, okay. I can't seem to find it. Uh, so what if I pre-order like the premium deluxe edition? Do I get everything? Why, and uh, also, you, why is that not on the chart? <laughs> yeah, if you pre-order the premium, if you pre-order the digital deluxe edition, you will get everything. Interesting. That's another thing I should mention that it's not in this article. This game is digital only. There will be no physical version of it. Also interesting. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So I don't. I still don't know how I'm gonna how to get everything. Like, what do I do? Yeah. do okay. So how much is the digital deluxe edition? So here. Okay. So the standard edition of Sonic Origins will be forty dollars. Okay. The digital deluxe edition 
is forty five dollars. Oh, Tech Nanner linked me the thank you very much linked me the the simplified chart. Yeah, there it is. Here's the tweet finally. What? How much did you say the digital deluxe edition was? Forty five. Oh, that's not a lot at all. But but like I don't need things unlocked for me. Like if I'm gonna be playing the yeah. game, I'll just unlock it myself. Oh, here we go. Okay. Oh, I got sneeze. Do you see it on the screen? Yeah. I have it on my phone. There we go. All right. Um. Okay. So the things that you're miss. So you can buy everything as DLC if you get the regular version. Uh. uh so so the well, um, so what you're missing the hundred bonus coins. I mean, that's a, what what the fuck is is even that? Like, what does that give you? What's the purpose? Well, the, of those, the those are those coins I was talking about before from the anniversary mode that give you like I don't know things to unlock in the and I guess, I guess like you can unlock artwork or music or crap. Okay, uh, so so we don't even know if like there's a there's a finite amount of coins you can get in the game. Like maybe if yeah. you don't pre-order the game, you won't be able to unlock some things. I doubt that's right. the case, but that could happen. Uh, both I mean, of the, the way the, things are going, it looks like it, yeah. The 100 bonus coins you need to pre-order in order to get. Uh, that's, mm -hmm. that, I feel like that shouldn't be on this chart, or it should be like a, like an aside. Like, plus, if you pre-order, you get this. Like, the pre-order stuff well, should be like, a complete it, aside. It's it's like with mobile games, uh, how if you, use, if you use the link in the description below, you'll get 100 coins to spend yeah. on the in-game shop or whatever the fuck. It's, that's what they're doing. It should Basically. be, this is what you get with the standard, this is what you get with the deluxe, and if you pre-order, this is what you get. Yeah. Anyway, uh, 100 bonus coins is pre-order. Uh, mirror mode is a pre-order. <laughs> but it's also unlockable in the game, so it doesn't matter. Right. Uh, hard missions are DLC, but it comes with the with the deluxe edition. Uh, letterbox background pre-order bonus. But it's also in-game DLC for both versions. Wait, I thought it was part uh, of. Wait, I thought which one is it? Which it says on about? it says on this simplified chart. Letterbox background yeah. is a pre-order bonus and DLC for both versions. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So if you yeah, pre-order okay. it, if you pre-order it, you'll get it automatically. If you don't pre-order it, it will be DLC down the road. Okay, so you can't get it in the game for free Correct. unless you pre-order it. Correct. Uh, I hope that's not important. <laughs> um, character animations in the main menu. Everything else is DLC. Everything else on this yeah. list is DLC, uh, but also included in the digital deluxe edition. So you can purchase it if you want piecemeal, but I mean, if you want everything, it's $5 more. It's probably a much better deal if you just freaking get the digital deluxe edition. Right. I'm just going to get the regular edition. I don't need all this shit. I just want to play the damn game. Yeah. Uh, I mean, but at, at this point, I'm going to wait and see, like, what, like, maybe this, there is a substantial difference between the two. Maybe uh, the DLC will be more expensive, like, substantially more expensive than just getting the digital deluxe edition. Yeah, I feel like it will be. If you get all the DLC, yeah. I feel like it's going to be a lot of money. It'll probably be, like, a buck each at, at the at minimum. Also... I mean, to put it bluntly, forty dollars for four games. Yeah, they're completely remastered and remade. But when you consider that the Genesis Classics Collection has thirty games and is often less than this, in fact, yeah. I think it's by default less than this. You know, the value proposition of Sonic Origins drastically goes down. So. so this just in tech Nanner linked us uh sonic content locked behind dlc here it is it's a it's a hedgehog that's encased in in uh i think this is what they do to either put the hedgehog to sleep or to resuscitate like give it cpr oh god they just put a they put it in a container and blow air into it wow anyway you learn something um yeah so the other there's a there's a million different ways to play most of these games. The only yes. one that's a little hard to play is Sonic Three, 
the, the, you can get yeah. it i think on pc uh you can get it's... it you can get it on steam and uh you can to my knowledge you can still get it on xbox 360 and it will play on the xbox one and series x and s but that's got the different music right no that's got the that's got the original music the the, the xbox one yes but the pc one doesn't the pc one i believe no, so the different music is from the PC port from 1997. Oh, okay. <laughs> to my knowledge, what's on Steam right now is the original Genesis music. Okay. Well, if you want that, you better buy it now because... <laughs> yes! <laughs> because <laughs> bad news! Sega plans to delist several classic Sonic re-releases due to their uh, presence in the upcoming Sonic Origins, according to the Japanese developer via an official press release this morning. Uh, Sonic Origins, as we said, launches June 3rd on home consoles and PC. Uh, Sega specifically named this collection as the reason why the four Sonic games largely won't be available piecemeal on digital storefronts after May 20th. Uh, there are a couple of exceptions, the press release explains. Sonic the Hedgehog 1 and 2 will remain available via Sega Ages on the Nintendo Switch, and Sonic the Hedgehog 2 will still be playable via Sega Genesis on Nintendo Switch Online. While delisting generally doesn't make games you already purchase unplayable, the tactic is still considered anti-consumer due to it limiting folks' ability to purchase single games at reduced prices. Uh, in some cases, such as Bioshock and Dead Island, the newer reissues lack previous features or support or sport new bugs as well. Um, but hey, at least spending a few more bucks on Sonic Origins, you get character animations in the main menu. That's a weird. <laughs> that's not a weird thing to lock behind a deluxe edition paywall at all. Uh, I saw somewhere as a different article, but they did the math. All all four Sonic games on Steam right now are only five bucks. So, four times five is twenty dollars. So you can get well, everything that's in the, the Origins collection right now, right now, for half the price of the Origins collection. I'm hoping that the Origins collection brings value in all of the updates that it has. Yeah. But I'm also hoping that they also give you the vanilla versions the way they were intended to be played, or else, or well, else we're gonna have problems when they start delisting stuff. Well, so Sonic Origins is going to give you the games as they were originally released, as well as these new updated versions. Right. The problem is, you know, these games are already available elsewhere, and Sega is basically telling you that if you want to play these games, the only way to legally play them now, in, in 2022, is the Sonic Origins collection. That's it. So, so Frank Cifaldi, who's a, a game, like a games preservationist, uh, yes, tweeted, I 100% guarantee that something will be different slash inaccurate in the new versions and that this is a completely boneheaded move. It's like we fetishize film so much that we want to make the same mistakes. Star Wars made tossing away the originals for the better version. Exactly. Uh, that's the thing that I'm worried about. Like, yeah, they, it looks like this. It's gonna have the original classic vanilla versions, but there might be something that is inaccurate or weird or stupid that that we might yeah. find out when the games come out, or or, or, yeah. or there's like a weird way you have to play it or something. Something weird is gonna happen. But also now, instead of just buying Sonic Three, you have to buy the forty dollar Origins collection. Yeah. I mean, I think the best point of comparison, honestly, is the Grand Theft Auto Trilogy Collection. Mm -hmm. Those games were available individually uh, for years. And then when Rockstar said, we're going to re-release them in the Trilogy Pack, by the way, you can no longer get those original versions anymore. The only way to play these games is the uh, Trilogy Collection Pack. Uh, that's, what? That's, what this, that's what this is pointing to. One comparison that people seem to be making is uh, uh, Super Mario All-Stars, which mm. admittedly 
was uh, also a shit show. <laughs> yes. Because these are just straight up like ROM ports mm -hmm. uh, with uh, with barely any changes. Uh, yes. They barely did any work to it. They just made a collection and put them out. The difference here is that these haven't been re-released basically at all. Like Mario 64, you got a virtual console release and that's basically it. Um, another issue is that they took it off of store sh shelves uh, last May? Yeah, last May. Yeah. May 31st. They took it off of store, March 31st. store shelves and they pulled it from the eShop. So you can't even yeah. buy it on the eShop. You can still find the physical version for like 60 bucks. It's it's not... Yeah. But they stopped producing it. Um, and that's most of people's... That's most of people's arguments for why Sonic Origins is better is because uh, they're not pulling it from store shelves. Like, like they're letting you buy it if, as, as for a while. As, but yeah. it's digital, so eventually it'll, it'll, it'll cease to exist. But... Uh, for the time being, it looks like it's in perpetuity. Uh, yeah. However, this was tweeted on April 20th before all of this news about them pulling the uh, the other versions yeah. of the game, which is not a good look. And I quote tweeted it and said, it ain't even out yet. Why are you saying it's better than Barrow 3D All-Stars? It's not, we don't even know. It could be, it, something could be game breaking with it that, that is bad for games preservation. Um, Like, we don't know. And then the news about uh, them pulling the older versions happened. And again, a yeah. lot of the replies here are people saying that uh, All Stars was pulled from shelves. I mean, to be fair, they pulled uh, Mar they're pulling Mario sixty four off a of virtual console. <laughs> yeah, technically. Also, it had a physical version. I mean, there's look. Yeah. I'm not trying to say 3D All Stars is better. I think they're. I think that's also bad. But I think we have to wait for Sonic Origins to come out before yeah. we start saying it's better. There's a lot of cool shit going on. Like they actually made some changes to the games, and you can play mm -hmm. the classic mode. But I'm gonna hold off on saying that it's better or it's good until it's here. It it looks very good, but when it's here, we'll be able to see what went wrong. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, I have, I don't have a lot of faith in in in, in Sega right now. Yeah, I I want to say like Sega's handling of their Genesis library has consistently proven to be very very well done. Um, the Sega Ages ports are all excellent. Um, the Genesis Classics Classics Collection is great. Um, the Genesis Mini uh, console was many people think that's the best of the mini consoles. So they know how to remaster and re-release their old games. This game, Sonic Origins, just seems to be, you know, going up against a wall of bullshit that doesn't need to have. <laughs> this, like, artificial bullshit that Sega does not need to do, like, but they're doing it anyway. It's just giving it all this more bad press. Um, the article I was reading goes on to say... That in addition to all this, Sonic Origins will be using Denuvo, a controversial oh, yeah. anti piracy measure on PC. Um, Denuvo has long been a thorn in the side of PC gamers, with many mentioning the many mention of the technology provoking stern public outcry. For good reason, it often ruins games purchased legitimately while also doing little to actually tamp down piracy. When Denuvo was added to Doom Eternal in 2020, for example, the negative response led to its removal from the first-person shooter after only one week. And anecdotally, I remember that when the Resident Evil 2 remake came out and that had Denuvo in it, it would crash the game immediately, whereas people who pirated the game had no problem launching it and playing it. So, so Denuvo has... I tried to look into it because it was pretty unclear what exactly Denuvo did and why it was so egregious. But um, yeah. it looks like Denuvo anti-piracy uh, is a really huge like system hog. Like it, it, it takes a lot of uh, system resources while you're running the game. It also mm -hmm. gets picked up by like firewall and anti and uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, uh, anti antivirus anti software. Oh, okay. uh, so 
it, it, it's 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 not it's not good it's not a good anti-piracy thing but that that seems to be the yeah. pc version so uh probably just don't get it on pc if i had to if i had to yeah. guess but yeah this isn't all sunshine and rainbows like it's a cool uh <laughs> pc i mean it's a cool collection and i'm glad that they're doing it but but and the developers of the retro sonic stuff usually do a really good job but sega always has to stand in the way in a really weird it, it, they get weird yeah. about it and they're doing they're already on their bullshit so also i've been sitting here trying to find this tweet but one of the developers of the game uh quote tweeted the announcement and was like uh i'm proud of the team we did the best that we could <laughs> and, and everyone's like oh no what's wrong yeah so uh yeah i i'm look i'm gonna get it and i'm happy it's coming out but uh i'm gonna reserve yeah. my judgment until it comes out and I, you should for every fucking game yes uh i also want to mention earlier we said that for all four games you can play as uh sonic tails and knuckles uh that is not true you cannot play as knuckles in sonic cd okay that makes sense no it doesn't because it doesn't it doesn't because in the original release you can only play as sonic mm -hmm. when they did the ios port they added the ability to play as tails so that leads me to believe that this is a conversion of the ios port more so than it is a, a from the ground up rebuild which means that they are choosing not to let you play as knuckles in this game out of sheer sheer laziness <laughs> How hard would it have been to implement Knuckles into Sonic CD? Maybe he would Don't have broken some parts. Because <laughs> Sonic CD has a lot of like... His gliding ability would have been useless. Because it's got a lot of like cramped corridors and spaces in Sonic CD. But I feel like if you're going to hype up the fact that you can play as all three characters in all four games, you need to have all three characters playable in all four games. So I, I don't want to knock them too much because it looks like they're doing a lot of work on... I, oh, look, they're not doing that much work, but they, they're doing a lot more work than other collections have. So yeah. I'm happy with what we're getting. Uh, I don't know how much I would have played Sonic C with Knuckles, but you're yeah. saying that it's probably an iOS port. Does that mean that we're going to be able to get classic stuff out of this freaking game? Is it going to run different? Like, what's the deal with that? I don't I don't know. If that's just... We'll have to... That's part of the thing we're going to have to wait and see when the game comes out. Another, one last bit of controversy about this game that I think a lot of people are overlooking, and I hate that I've become this person, but I feel like it's important. <laughs> in, the, in the trailer, in the announcement trailer, on the last screen, in, in the fine print, the, the first line of the fine print reads, 4K and 60 frames a second, only available on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. The Switch version will not run at 60 frames per second. Oh. Which which sucks because this is a game these are games all about going fast and you know nerfing it down to 30 frames per second I feel like is a huge disadvantage to these games on this system, especially when the Switch port of Sonic Mania runs at a clean 60. We know that the Switch can do 60. Um, these games are not graphically demanding. There's no reason why they can't do 60 frames a second. Yeah, obviously not 4K, probably not even 1080p, but they could still do 60 frames. Are you sure that it's not just, it won't be 4K? No, I've. I, it's going to be 30 frames a second on Switch. That's, that would be fucking terrible. That, I, I... Yeah. I feel like that's got to be a mistake. <laughs> Maybe like some things won't be 60, but like how could the whole game not be 60? That doesn't add I don't up. know. Yeah. It's 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 not graphically intensive. Especially cuz the original games were technically 60 frames a second. You know, they were on interlaced TVs, but they were they ran at like 60 hertz. Give me 720p. I don't give a shit. Yeah. It's on the Switch, you know? Yeah. 
I I I think it's got to be like like 4K 60 on these consoles, and then they and then they just left Switch out because they're not going to be able to hit 4K. But they hopefully, yeah. uh, my God, hit that 60. God damn. Yeah. Uh. Anyway. Uh, what else did I want to? I think that I think. Did we have anything else for the for the stupid collection? Oh, Devolver had a little oh. had a little slam dunk. Yeah, Devolver. <laughs> Devolver had a good dunk on them. This was this was a funny tweet. It says our marketing department uh created a handy guide for pre-ordering Trek to Yomi. Please use it to navigate your path to purchase. And it's uh a chart just like the Sonic chart, the Sonic Origins chart, and it has five different versions of Trek to Yomi. All of them are different uh consoles. Mm-hmm. And every box is checked off. You get everything in all of the <laughs> in all of the versions. You don't have to buy yeah. anything separate. It's a joke. Yes. No matter what you get, you get the base game, uh ten percent off, epic journey through the underworld, and back. Uh stunning <laughs> visuals, remarkable soundtrack, progressively comp- uh, complex combat, and full credits at the end. So I played this game uh on Friday. Oh yeah, uh, you went to PAX. I did. Uh, I'm gonna have a video on it, hopefully Thursday. Uh, mm. This game's fucking hard, oh, and what? I barely got anywhere in it. And then I had to lower the yeah. difficulty, and I found out that there was a checkpoint I just wasn't pressing. Maybe the demo starts you off in a in, in an area where it doesn't tell you anything, but like yeah. it wasn't clear that you had to hit the checkpoint, and. Uh, I remember I, I played it. I was doing horribly. Uh, and then Jackson Scootish was behind me. And he was y- making fun of me the whole time. And, I, and then I lowered the difficulty and I still didn't get very far. And then I was like, you fucking you do it then. And then he took the controller and he pl- he plowed through the whole thing. Um, eh. But I was talking to somebody else about the demo. And they were like, did you get to the boss? And No, did you beat the boss? That's what they said. And I was like, there's a boss? Jeez. I didn't. I barely got anywhere. Uh, it, it just. It's a lot of. It's. It's mostly two D. It's. It's mostly just set pieces. It's a very pretty game. Uh, it's, yeah. It's mostly two D. Uh, or I'm sorry. It's mostly a side scroller. Will. It is a three D environment. Oh. Oh, one of uh, those. Oh yes. It's mostly a side scroller. Uh, there are some three D parts where it's like a little bit top down, um, mm-hmm. or at least there's depth to it. Uh, and most of the game is just you attacking and counterattacking, uh, and that's it. That's the whole game. But it's like you basically like you run into an enemy, you have to attack and counterattack, and then you get to another enemy, okay. you attack and counterattack. So it's just one enemy at a time. Uh, it was cool. I'll, I'll play it again. Hopefully, there's another demo so I can like actually sit down and play it because I felt bad. There was like a line of people behind me, and I was just eating shit the whole time. Um, right. But anyway. Chuck Diomi was pretty was was all right. I, I I need more time with it though to to form a uh, a better verdict. Yeah, not on Switch though. That's a shame. Uh, all right, so that's all we got to say about Sonic Origins. Uh, I'm gonna get it. I'm excited that it's coming out. Uh, and that's all I have to say about it. Yes. Uh, I am still excited for it, but I am cautiously excited. I'm going to wait and see uh what everyone says about it. Of, I am the type of person who would get the deluxe edition for it because I like Sonic, but uh, again, I'm going to wait and see what everyone else has to say because I've played these games however many millions of times, so I don't need them right now, but it would be nice to have them on Switch. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to get it, but I, there's nothing in the deluxe edition that really interests me. Like, I'm, it's They're both digital. All mm-hmm. I want to do is play sonic 3 and maybe even sonic cd in widescreen on a switch so um yeah i'm cool with just the 40 dollar version which is a lot to pay to play a freaking 30 year old game yeah it's ten dollars <laughs> a game basically uh all right we have people to thank we got shiny yeah. shiny wills on thank you for the subscription we got joe since with 17 months when the clock strikes half past six babe time to hit for Wolf Den Live. Please ignore this. Okay, well, you should have put that in the beginning. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Woody17, thanks for the four months. Duffman, thanks for the 11 months. Best podcast in oh, town. Yeah. You guys rock. Thanks, dude. Thank you. Spud Potato with five hundo bits. Hey, Bob, who is your underrated heavy hitter, my hero pick, and why? You mean the anime? Uh, when is the Final Fantasy fourteen stream coming? Okay, fuck you. Also, did you know that critically acclaimed? Okay. <laughs> okay, we're not reading about Final Fantasy. Uh, underrated who is heavy your hitter, most my underrated hero my hero pick? Um, I dude, I fell off on season five and I haven't watched it since that came out. Um, I, I mean, I, I have, I, I, I'm drawn towards uh, the teacher. What the hell is his name? I always forget his name. Uh, the sleepy guy. Cause I, that, cause that's just me. <laughs> He's got long hair and bags under his eyes. That's just me. Oh yeah. No, that's, I totally see it. What's what? Aizawa. That's his name. Uh, yeah, I like him. Uh, Monkey with seven months. So it's been seven months. That's pretty cool. Keep up the good content. Thanks, dude. Uh, Kiko, thanks for the 29 months. What day is it? The date. What year? That is a Terminator reference. I, I see you. Oh, I, I see you, Kiko. I didn't get it. Yeah, uh, it's, it's when Kyle Reese lands in the past and he like holds up a cop and he's like, demanding to know what day it is and specifically the year and when he says what year the cop is like looks at him like what are you talking about what year <laughs> uh thrill house x for 100 bits i'm old enough to remember when everyone also said sonic colors ultimate was better than 3d all-stars <laughs> i don't remember that i don't remember that i mean look i like sonic colors ultimate but it is not the same thing as 3d all-stars like not even close uh winter chimp thanks for the 100 bits will did you listen to it's almost dry by Pusha t uh no i have i have not i did not realize Pusha t was coming out with the new album uh i do have the new album by the regrets that i'm planning on listening to the regrets bob oh what the fuck is that they, they, <laughs> the they are in they are a uh predominantly female riot girl garage punk band who and they're all like 17 but <laughs> they kick ass so i'm excited to listen to that uh soul objective says you fell off as in you quit uh my hero uh because season five is the recent one. Oh, i season six isn't till fall okay i'm wrong then it's not season five uh, I fell off a long time ago. It was pretty much in, in, they did the school festival and then they did like another fucking stupid school thing and I I I was like I'm out. I want to see them punch people. I want like the I want like the the hard hitting like superhero shit. I don't want to see them trying to gear for a whole ass season. I don't want to see them gearing up to to play guitar. <laughs> that's my hero goes through these phases where it's like awesome superhero stuff where they like have to say they have to go on a mission to like save lives and stuff and then yeah. they go through like the school's having a festival we should bake cookies how are we gonna bake the cookies and it's like a whole <laughs> season of them trying to figure out how to bake the stupid cookies so there, there was a school festival and then something else happened and that's when i that's when i fell off Oh, Will froze. Look at his stupid face. <laughs> um, now I want to know when I fell off, but I guess I guess we'll we'll figure that out later. Um, I watched the whole school festival. Anyway, uh, we got. I Farrington Jr. with the two months. Love chilling with you guys. Thanks, bro. I appreciate it. New emote. <laughs> Hi, Will. Welcome back. Hello. Hi. Hey. Hey, everybody. I don't know what happened. I'm, but I'm here. Hope, you had hope a great face. Oh, oh, yeah. Thanks. I, I saw it when my internet came back. Uh. All right. Let's move on. All We're right. Done Us. with Sega stuff. 
Yeah, speaking of Sega and re-releasing retro games, three classic Sega games are coming, have, oh, sorry, they've already been added to Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack, uh, Space Harrier 2, Shining Force 2, and Sonic the Hedgehog Spinball. Oh, when did this happen? I uh, missed this? Yeah, this is uh, April 21st. That was Thursday. Oh, I was traveling. Yes. God damn it. I, I yes. like Sonic Spinball. I was going to say I love it, but I, 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 that game gets a lot of crap, and I replayed it recently, and it really isn't that good. But that game, I like that game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, Son <laughs> Sonic Spinball, it, it's definitely a weird one, and it's not for everyone, but if you were there when it came out, it was cool. I used to play it the shit was out cool. of that. That was I liked that yeah. that game a lot. Uh, audio is terrible. <laughs> it is, it is, but like the music is still kind of cool. It's oddly like kind of dark because like, yeah, like I just remember dark. it, but it's not good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's worth, uh, if you have Nintendo Switch Online, it's worth giving a shot on on that game because it's a wacky, weird one, and you got to experience it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the other two games, it's uh, Space Harrier 2, that is the Genesis sequel to the arcade classic. Plays pretty much like the original Space Harrier. Uh, so if you like arcade games, uh, I would say check that out. And then Shining Force 2 is a tactical role-playing game uh, that was made for the Genesis back in the day. Uh, don't really know much about it. I know this is this is a cult, uh, cult fan favorite, and... Uh, that's it. I guess it's it's the Sega answer to uh, Fire Emblem since it's a tactical game. It doesn't look very good. <laughs> no. I have to be honest with you. Yeah. It does not look good. Um, so but maybe you're into that sort of thing. Uh, so that happened on Thursday. So go play. Go give yeah. Sonic Spinball a shot. It's worth, it's worth checking out. Yeah. Uh, we got another tweet from Nintendo that's worth yes. talking about. Not just from Nintendo, Bob, but from the man himself. M the, Mr. Nintendo himself. Yes. <laughs> What's that man have to say for him? Well, I know what he has to say because I formulated the tweet for him. So, uh, I mean, I just realized I've been paying. Oh, Will's froze again. I just realized I've been paying for uh, Crunchyroll this whole time. New to Crunchyroll? What are you talking about? Oh, I need to make a username. Well, you froze again for some Hello, reason. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm back. Yeah, I keep, I keep losing internet. I, I've switched over to Wi-Fi. I'm gonna see if that works. Okay. I'm gonna read the tweet. Uh, this is. All right, you read the tweet. Yeah, you switched to Wi-Fi. Oh, did you do it already? I did. I did already. Yeah. Oh, then you read the tweet. This is Miyamoto after consulting with Chris San, my partner at Illumination on the Super Mario Brothers film. We have decided to move the global release to spring 2023, uh, April 28th in Japan and April 7th in North America. My deepest apologies, but I promise it will be well worth the wait. I don't like how it says uh, after consulting with Chris San, because I was like, Chris Pratt? You consulting with Chris Pratt himself? I know. I think I think a lot of people did. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people uh, thought the same thing. But like, no, I, I forgot the guy's name. But it's the the head of Illumination Studios who's making uh, this movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, so <laughs> I saw uh, some some tweets memeing on this. Uh. A lot of people think it's funny that he started this with this is Miyamoto. Uh yeah. but there uh there's also people being like Miyamoto probably saw a cut of the movie or something and was like, yo man, we're delaying this shit. Fucking <laughs> do the whole thing over again. <laughs> I mean, if they're gonna do the whole thing over again, that is not enough time to redo an entire animated film. I, I think it's very plausible that something happened and Miyamoto's like no and it set them back a lot maybe not doing the whole thing over again but something happened and he's like that's not gonna happen we're delaying this shit I mean 
you you got to remember it's a global pan there's still a global pandemic going on there's a lot of like issues uh in the hollywood industry that as a cause from uh by the pandemic uh movies get rewritten and delayed all the time um across the spider verse just got delayed till next year so i don't think this is necessarily the signs of something is wrong with the movie. If anything, I think this is a sign that if there is something wrong, like lowercase w wrong, uh, that they have now the opportunity to fix it and make the best possible movie they can be. If this is capital W wrong, like the production of the Flash movie wrong, then yeah, we could be in for we could be in for a disaster. I I have a feeling this movie will be at the very least all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I don't think uh I think it's going to be weird and wacky, but but I have faith in in Nintendo's oversight. Uh Yeah. So uh, hey, I'm glad they're delaying it. Uh work on it as much as you need to. And yeah. I'm glad that they're cooperating with Nintendo this much. So mm-hmm. I think this is cool. Uh this whole time we've been talking about that, I've been looking through Crunchyroll. <laughs> uh, I definitely finished season four. I don't know when I stopped watching on season five. It might have been the end, but I'm pretty sure I saw a couple of these. Yeah, somewhere in the beginning of season five, I think I dropped off. Maybe I'll start it back up. I don't know. Is it good? Should I watch? I don't know. Is season five any good? Um... There's some leaks about the Mario movie. I heard that uh, Donkey Kong doesn't talk at all because Mario doesn't speak gorilla. Then why did they hire Seth Rogen to play him? To grunt and stuff. Like how Vin Diesel is Groot. <laughs> just just do that laugh of his? Maybe. Um, I don't know. How, I mean, I don't buy any of the leaks, like any of the rumor stuff. Yeah. Uh, the only one I bought was when Sebastian Maniscalco was talking about it because it was like that's le- that's legit. He's yeah, he flat out said I'm in it. <laughs> yeah, so that was that was true. Um, yeah, but every time I hear about these weird leaks or like the script leaking or whatever, I don't I don't buy it at all. Yeah, it, it, you never should because it's it's oftentimes it's there's no truth. The the in truth the that's in there is so small, like it's not worth believing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's it. I mean, there's nothing yeah. really more to talk about. The Mario movie's delayed. I don't think anybody's like really holding out hope to watch this movie. <laughs> so like, yeah. I really don't think it's that big of a deal that it got delayed. Um. Anyway, more news for on the what Nintendo is a big front. deal? Yes, apparently. Huh. Uh, sorry. Go ahead. I thought you were gonna say something about the Mario movie. I, I didn't want to no. step on you. You were gonna no, say something about gonna this. Say- not this. Uh, oh, apparently, uh, Joy-Con, uh, rep- Joy-Con repairing is still an ongoing thing at Nintendo. And apparently, one of their repair centers was constantly overwhelmed. If you lived east of the Mississippi River and you've ever had to send your Switch to Nintendo due to Joy-Con drift, then it definitely passed through a single repair shop in Syracuse, New York. Though Nintendo handled the process for submitting repairs, the actual work was performed by a company called United Radio. According to one former supervisor in the Switch repair department who spoke to Kodaku under the condition of anonymity, the volume of defective Joy-Cons that came into the shop was very stressful, contributing to high turnover, which in turn resulted in lots of repair mistakes. Uh, The perennial phenomenon known as Joy-Con Drift has been a major source of frustration for Switch owners since the console launched in 2017. After some use, thumbsticks on the controllers often started to register movement. Even when uh, in a neutral position, the problem is so widespread and severe that multiple class action lawsuits about the issue have been uh, brought up against Nintendo. And in a rare move, the company's president apologized for the trouble it caused customers. Uh, the conversation about faulty thumbsticks has been so widespread that even Valve had to address the possibility of Steam Deck drift <laughs> in an IGN interview. 
According to our source who Kotaku has independently confirmed worked at a high level within the repair shop, the faulty design of the hardware was felt most acutely by those tasked with fixing the hundreds of controllers that flooded in each day. They said that easily thousands of Joy-Cons were coming through each week. United Radio confirmed over the phone that they handled switch repairs, but the customer-facing process goes through Nintendo. United Radio relied on temporary employees that were supplied through Aerotech, a staffing company. The former supervisor said we ended up having to set up an entire new workspace just for Joy-Con repair. A lack of senior expertise among the staff led to frequent mistakes on Nintendo Switch repairs, our source claimed. Uh, since United Radio uh, struggled with employee retention, a lot of employees were inexperienced. Temporary employees from Aerotech were eligible to be hired by United Radio as full-time employees after three months, but many never made it past two and a half. Uh, nitpicky firings by Aerotech and folks not showing up were also contributing factors to high turnover. Kotaku Sorts uh, was the only permanent member of the team who is a native English speaker. Most of the temporary workers at this source uh, at the source trained are Vietnamese immigrants who are less familiar with English. Uh, this means only a couple of them could speak English well enough to act as liaisons between the trainer and the rest of the staff. Our source uh, estimated that around two-thirds of the repair workers were Vietnamese. Other languages spoken on the floor include Spanish, Swahili, and other South Asian languages. The workers are on work visas or are American citizens. The Nintendo repair team even celebrated some of their colleagues passing their citizenship tests during their employment. Despite the communication challenges, these workers also often stuck around the longest. Nevertheless, the need to constantly train new employees put a significant strain on the team's ability to oversee repairs. According to the source, customers who sent their Joy-Cons from 2017 to 2018 were sent new replacements. For a while, the speedy solution helped alleviate pressure. Uh, after the first year, however, the shop staff were forced to repair every set of Joy-Cons. Turnaround times were tight and the pace was difficult to maintain. The shop was held to a standard of repairing 90% of incoming Joy-Cons within four days, regardless of whether the staffing company sent them new workers or not. But it's not just the repair shop staff who experienced problems as a result of the conditions at United Radio. Customer experience was also impacted at times. In one major error, a Nintendo customer was sent a repaired Switch with a different customer's account and save data. In a Reddit post, the customer said, I hold United Repair accountable for their unprofe unprofessional and lack of care in handling my property. They had complete disregard for my console and save data and have cost me my 90 plus hours that I put into Zelda Breath of the Wild. I also hold Nintendo accountable for their lack of understanding of the modern gamer and their need to be able to back up save data. In response to this incident, the source at United Radio proposed and insinuated a new policy where a switch would be factory wiped if its serial number could not be verified through the repair process. Because of this, some switch owners have occasionally had their data wiped after sending in their consoles for repair. Nintendo did not respond to a request for comment at the time of this publication. Nintendo of America's reliance on third-party contract labor is not exclusive to its repair shops. The game publisher recently landed in a major labor dispute in its home state of Washington as well. One worker filed a complaint with the National Labor Relations Board last week, and the case is currently pending. And it kept Ooh. making it sound like this was like a tiny shop that's doing the repairs. Uh, mm -hmm. Did they say it's in America? Yeah, they said it's in Syracuse, New York. It is. Uh, yeah, I, I so, found I found it on Google Maps. <laughs> um, it looks pretty big. Yeah, I mean, assuming it's this whole building or one of these whole buildings. Uh, so, I mean, it might be big, but uh, if they're getting a substantial amount of Joy Cons in, and they, you know, if their turnaround time is within is ninety percent within four days. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's a fairly difficult process and you keep losing employees. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how big the building is. It's still, it's a lot of work for one company to do. So that's why they have such a quick turnaround that they're forcing them to do it within four days. 
Yeah. So that that's that's good news if you want to get your Joy-Con fixed. Uh, it's bad yeah. news for these workers, though. Um, yeah. I mean, it just goes to show how widespread the issue is. Uh, in, in, yeah. in terms of uh, save data being deleted off of Switch consoles, most uh, companies, even friggin' uh, Apple, will tell you uh, if you're getting anything serviced for any reason, they might wipe your 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 data. Yeah. But I think it's a bigger problem because Nintendo and and their save data uh, yes. backup solution is very poor. Yes. The only way to back up your save data is to be a member of Switch Online, and even then, not every game supports uh, backup. Yeah, like uh, Animal Crossing. Animal uh, Crossing. If, being, if you yeah. get a new Switch, you're pretty much screwed. Now they have like a weird way to like migrate your stuff over, but I don't know. My friggin' island is still on my uh, Animal Crossing switch which is now the yeah. uh it's it's now the handy boy switch yeah um so yeah i it, that's one of the biggest problems nintendo has with i think the easiest solution is is fixing your fucking online situation and fixing your your save data backup situation yeah. for all of your first party games there's no reason why your first party games should should be that hard to to back up and stuff yeah uh, i was playing uh I've been playing 30XX, which is a uh, a roguelike version of uh Mega Man X. Yeah. Uh, and it's a roguelike, so like if you die, it's permadeath, you're dead. But every time right. you finish a level, there's a save. It's save and quit. <laughs> you just save, and then you can come back and continue playing from where you left off. But if you die, it right. erases. I don't understand why every game doesn't have something like that. <laughs> it doesn't make any, it baffles me that game that's a fucking indie game that's an alpha it's been in alpha for like three years just yeah. just give me if you have a problem with save data you don't want people copying save data just do that yeah i don't understand uh michelle in the chat says when i transferred my island from my light to the oled it stopped counting my time i'm stuck at 650 hours that also sucks because like yeah, it's kind of like a point of pride to like have a lot of hours in a game, and when the hours don't track correctly or you lose that, I, I get pretty frustrated. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, uh, this isn't news. J Joy Con drift is a widespread issue that I well, still have I think, never experienced. <laughs> I think it's it's not news that Joy Con drift is a big deal. I think what's news right. is. The extent of it and its effect yes. on, you know, the people actually, because, you know, to before we all just thought, oh, mail it to Nintendo, they do their Nintendo magic and we get it back. We didn't really take into account that, you know, there people are sending hundreds, if not thousands of Joy-Cons to one factory east of the Mississippi River. So I'm guessing on the, on the west of the Mississippi River, you're sending it to possibly one other factory. So there is, at minimum, only two factories in this country <laughs> that have to handle hundreds, if not thousands, of Joy-Con repair, and they have to get it done within four days Honestly, by any that's, means necessary. That's more factories than I was expecting. and Because that's America. Right. Also... That's a lot more repairs than I was expecting. If they, if they, if they're that understaffed yeah. and 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 that that hard at work there, um, so yeah, the extent at which Joy-Con drift is happening is the news here. Um, yeah. So I guess we'll continue to be reporting on Joy-Con drift as it happens. Stay tuned to yeah, the, and I mean, the look, podcast. And hopefully, like you know, conditions for these people improve and there's a better process for repairing joy cons or you know fixing the issue wholesale so that it doesn't happen or it doesn't happen as frequently as it has been happening but i mean it's either way it's not a good look for no. nintendo that you know a that your product you know will become defective faster than all the other similar products uh like it like the dual sense and the xbox controller or even your pro controller um but also too the fact that you're you have such harsh demands for 
your contracted employees. Like, I think people can wait another week to get their Joy-Con back. I, I don't know about that. I, I think <laughs> that they already have really bad PR over the Joy-Con drift. So mm -hmm. it makes sense for them to be pushing so hard for the repairs to be quick. That's not an excuse for the poor conditions of the workers and the fast turnaround of these workers. That's just the mindset that they have, you know? Right. They should... They should fix it in other ways staff them better take the hit yeah. in in revenue by by uh you know just giving replacements for whole joy cons or maybe having a better yeah. recycle system so that you can uh uh send refurbished ones and then fix them in the back end um, yeah but uh yeah uh, uh it, it's 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 a problem and it's going to continue to be a problem it reminds me a lot of the uh uh xbox 360 red ring of death because that that's affected, oh, yeah. I think ninety percent or a hundred, all nearly a hundred percent of Xbox 360s originals have had the Red Ring of Death happen. But yeah, the, I, the the difference is they wound up finding a way to fix the Red Ring of Death. Right. They haven't had a they haven't found a way to fix this or minimize it in any way. So stick drift has always been an issue on every stick. Uh, yeah. Recent. Well, actually, no, I shouldn't say that. Um. There's a certain type of of stick technology that gets rid of drift altogether, uh, and it uses magnets instead of having the the plastic grind up against other plastic. Um, so they just need to start adapting that, and it's probably going to be expensive. But Nintendo, if they're if they're making a new Switch, that's the first thing they should be considering is is new yeah. stick technology, the hall sensing stick, uh, gully kit has it in in their controller that i talked about uh but fucking the dreamcast had it so mm -hmm. it's it, it's existed for a really long time it's nothing new also gully kit uh so so St steam allows allows you to valve allows you to replace the thumbstick on the steam deck so if it they know that that's a finite resource they know that uh it will get drift at some point so if it happens you could just replace the stick yourself but yeah. third parties are also going to start working on their own sticks for the Steam Deck, and Gully Kit has a hall sensing one that they're working on supposedly. Um, so if you want to pop that in, maybe you'll get a little better of a stick experience. I'm a little disappointed in the Steam Deck stick because uh, it has like a kink in it. Like I, I, I need like those nice plastic uh, or or steel uh, anti slip rings around the around the stick oh, gate. Yeah. Uh, I think every controller should have that. Um, also, the Pro Controller, everybody gets the white around the edge. It's because the plastic is rubbing up against the plastic of the stick box. Like, that's another... Yeah. Po There's plenty that they can do to make thumbsticks much better than they are right now. Uh, and hopefully, when they make a new Switch, we see that. Or make a Joy-Con Plus, you know? Make a, yeah. make a better Joy-Con that, that doesn't get drift like that. Because there's people that plow through joy cons that get drift and then they just keep buying new joy cons and they, i'm sure they would yeah. love to get uh, i like i don't i'm not in the camp that needs uh, i have so many fucking joy con but i'm not in the camp that needs like a joy con plus but there's plenty right. of people that would totally buy one just so they don't have to keep sending theirs back mm -hmm. anyway that's my stick drift rant for the week uh hey Guess what, guys? Everybody's been waiting for Splatoon to come out. Yeah. Now you're getting this. Will make I think that uh, did they? I'm hearing tell that this got delayed, but I don't think they ever had a date. I don't think so either. Did they say spring? I don't. I don't remember. I honestly do not remember. I'm pretty sure uh, they just said oh. they just said 2022. Yeah. Well, anyway, now it's coming out it's September 9th. That's right. Across Splatsville and the sun-scorched uh, Splatlands desert of the game Splatoon 3, you'll engage in ink silk battles with other inklings and octolings and discover features, weapons, and, of course, the, tend uh, the trendiest gear this side of the sun. If you're, if you're game to witness this chaos unfold, uh, then get ready to dive into the ink when the game launches on Nintendo Switch on September 9th. Uh, in Splatoon 3 online, 4v4 turf battles can create uh, heated matches uh, across a mix of new and returning stages where teams of four face off to cover the most ground in their ink. 
Newly uncovered footage provides insight on one of these new stages, um, Eel Tail Alley, along with a look at the uh, along with a look at the Stinger, a new bow-shaped weapon type that enables you to slink to slink ink sideways and vertically. You can view all of this plus a glimpse into the new gear and information by visiting the Nintendo YouTube channel. Uh, in addition to frantic 4v4 multiplayer, Splatoon 3 features a fresh single-player campaign and the next iteration of the co-op Salmon Run mode. In the single-player story mode, you'll join Agent 3 in a fight against the unruly Octarians and discover the secrets of a mysterious place called Altaria and the Fuzzy Ooze. Uh, when diving into Salmon Run, you'll ink up with teammates to fend off waves of dangerous sal Salmonoid bosses, some of which are colossal in size plus starting today active nintendo switch online plus expansion pack members can enjoy the splatoon 2 octo expansion dlc on nintendo switch at no additional cost it's a great way to train up for uh, before splatoon 3 launches on switch previously only available as a separate purchase you can now dive into the large scale single player expansion for splatoon 2 with a paid switch online plus expansion pack membership there's also so they, uh, a, a new weapon that they announced today, which is a uh, 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 like a vacuum that sucks up ink and then spits it out in your color. So like while while you're being attacked by the other mm -hmm. team, you can suck up their ink and then shoot it back at them at, in your color. That's um, cool. So people are saying that it was original. Uh, Edward Bova says they they said early summer 2022. Yes. Uh, can we confirm that? Well, September 9th is still summer. It's just late summer. No, it's late summer. It's not the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, people are saying that, uh, they swapped the release dates of this and Xenoblade. I, yeah, I did see that. I think Xenoblade 3 got... Yeah, Xenoblade uh, Chronicles 3 is now coming up earlier than anticipated. That is very strange uh, that a yeah. game would be released earlier than anticipated. People are saying that's because it was originally going to launch when a Final Fantasy game was going to launch and they didn't want to compete. So th these are the rumors. The rumors are that Xenoblade right. was going to compete with a Final Fantasy game. So Nintendo said, F that. We're going to re release it early. And they were like, well, instead of we got a room now. Instead of Splatoon, we'll push that back to to, to September. Right. Uh, Invader Gold says they never said early summer. They just said summer 2022. Okay. So there you go. It's still coming. Is that summer? Is September yeah, summer. still summer? Uh, fall doesn't start until September 22nd. Okay. This trailer just says 2022. Yeah. Maybe there's another trailer that says summer. Uh, but that's the thing with like, whenever they announce a release window, people get in their own heads like when they think it's going to happen. And then when it's not then, they're like, it got delayed. <laughs> yeah. So I hate when that shit happens. Um... Anyway, uh, so there you go. If you're interested in Splatoon, listen, uh, I'm not, I'm going to play this game, but I'm not, you know, like that excited about it. Right. People were very shocked to see that the, uh, the release date announcement had like an insane amount of traction on Twitter in Japan. Uh, really? It had, yeah, like the, the day it was announced, it had hundreds of thousands of likes and stuff, and people were going nuts about it because it's a huge deal right. in Japan. It's a big deal game. Yeah, and, it's and, it's a very, like the whole like fashion aspect of it is very much steeped in like Japanese youth fashion culture. Mm -hmm. Like it obviously is. So yeah, I, you know, it makes sense to me why it's a big deal in Japan. Uh, and, and it, it also, uh, makes more sense why like certain marketing for nintendo shows uh mario link uh and a uh, friggin' inkling <laughs> yeah and, and animal crossing those are like their four big titles and when you look at it you're like why is splatoon up there but you know it's yeah. because in japan it's that big of a deal mm -hmm. uh i'll be interested to see some big ass arenas like they like they had in the uh 
in the Nintendo Switch uh, uh, commercial where they had like Splatoon in a big arena match. Yeah. Uh, did we? No, we didn't. We didn't thank Jin Jukebox for the 16 months evening, fellas. Hope you're having a great day. I am. How are you doing? Oh, well, you went the wrong way. <laughs> you moved the camera the wrong way. One of these one of these days, I'm going to figure this out. Um, next on the list, Sony reportedly plans to put ads in PlayStation games. They're not the only ones. Not just, not just Sony, but Microsoft as well. Sony is reportedly working on bringing advertisements to free-to-play PlayStation games, according to a report by Insider. Uh, the ads would appear in games and are meant to give game developers a way to monetize their work and encourage them to continue uh, building free-to-play games. The in-game ads are expected to launch by the end of the year and would appear in inconspicuous places within the game, like billboards. Players could also get rewards by watching advertisements, and the ads would also be sold through private marketplace insider reports. Sources also told Insider that Sony hasn't yet decided if it would take a portion of the ad revenue, but it is considering having developers and publishers pay for consumer data. Sony did oh. not respond to a request for comment. Uh, reports of Sony's plans follow news last week that Microsoft had also reportedly planning on doing something similar with free-to-play Xbox games, also reported by Insider. Ads in free-to-play Xbox games are expected to roll out later this year as well, and Microsoft doesn't plan to take a cut of revenue. Uh, as, noted, as noted in the Insider Report, advertisers may need some convincing to join the program. Ads that appear next to mature or violent content may be a concern, and tracking, and tracking what users do after seeing an in-game ad could be difficult. The possibility of ads annoying gamers is also a concern for Microsoft, according to Insider. Imagine you see a Coca-Cola like billboard in a game and then you like kill a guy right in front of it and his brain matter like splatters all over the head. <laughs> Probably Did you ever not a good see, look. Uh, this was like a while ago, but um, there is an episode of AEW Dynamite where it was Chris Jericho and Nick Gage in a hardcore death match. Mm -hmm. And like... AEW does this thing where they'll still show the matches during a commercial break, but they'll show the ads in like picture in picture. And there was part of the match where Nick Gage takes a pizza cutter and slices Chris Jericho's face open. And then he holds up the pizza slicer. And then the ad is Domino's presents the <laughs> pizza tracker app. No. <laughs> yeah. So it, something like that could happen. So, I'm weirdly okay with ads in video games under a very specific criteria. Yeah. I think free to play games, you got to make money somehow. If there's going to be right. ads, as long as they're not egregious, like put a freaking billboard for Coca Cola. Who cares? Yeah. Like they already billboards have billboards for fake shit. Like why not just make it real world shit and make a little money out of it? I even, I'll even like take like, you know, you can buy a t shirt with like the Coca Cola logo on it. I mean, I'm wearing a Hard Rock Cafe t-shirt, for God's sake. I don't have a problem with company logos on shirts. So you could do something like that. Yeah, yeah. And, it's, it's, and the selling data to, to, to advertising and stuff, that's also tricky. Like, some some sometimes the data they sell is like your email address which is like no you don't want to do that don't do that right but sometimes it's right. like tracking what they do after they see the ad like is he gonna hit the pause button like i don't think that's yeah. a big deal like if i see the ad right. and then i hit pause for like 30 seconds I'm, i might be buying it on my phone or something like yeah i think that's not too egregious to to, to sell to an advertiser um yeah but if it's like giving them my personal information that's a huge problem uh, I think it's weird that Microsoft doesn't want a cut. I guess they're they're giving a cut to the developer, but they have their own free to play games. Yeah, and they have a lot of studios. So I mean, I guess they're gonna give it to yeah. their developer, which is them anyway. So that's already weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, Travel says I draw the line at the advertisements interrupting interrupting the gameplay. That is a thing that we've yes. seen in the past. I don't yes, remember what, uh, what game. Uh, I think it was the most recent NBA 2K game. Um, before you start, before you started your NBA game, or even like in between the different periods, it would have an actual commercial. 
Yeah, that's bad. like straight up a commercial. Or also, like they would have him like well, I think in the career mode, you can walk up to Jake from State Farm and he'll tell you all about how great State Farm insurance is. That's yeah. that's bad. Yeah. So advertisements in games is already a thing. Um, yeah. It, it's. It all depends on what they do with it and 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 how they do it. I, I, we we often yeah. talk about here how games uh, should cost more than they do. Uh, they they they're bigger and bigger budgets, but they still cost like the same as they did back in the friggin' nineties. Um, yeah, which is which is not not good for them increasing these budgets. Um, so again if you're gonna put a freaking coca-cola billboard where a fake billboard would have been i don't think that's big yeah. of, that's that big of a deal if if, if the advertiser is going to impede the gameplay that'll show in the review scores which will then cause less people to buy the game so right i think that they they should know what they're doing in terms of like nba that those are those games that like people are going to buy no matter what they have they have an exclusive right. license people buy the same game every freaking year you can do anything in those games and people are still going to buy them yeah. Um, but anyway, I don't think, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not completely against advertisements in video games, but, uh, there could be there. It just depends on how they do them and it, and it could be a, it could be a huge problem. Right. Um, I think that, uh, the FCC has got to step in and make some rules. Like there's, there's, it's, it's still like the wild west on TV and movies. Like they like in Transformers, uh, they freaking they knocked over a Budweiser car and freaking Budweiser spilled everywhere. And it, yeah, if I did that on YouTube, I would have to say this video is sponsored by Budweiser. But if you do it in fucking yeah. Transformers, you only need to have a little footnote in the credits that's two hours after the event even happens. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, FCC or SEC? I don't know. Will what? What do I mean? I think I mean FCC, uh, right? Oh no, FCC. FTC. Yeah. Federal Trade Commission. Well, the FCC is the Federal Communications Commission. So wouldn't they have something to do with the ad ad placement in like YouTube and movies and stuff? I don't know. I'm, it's the F something. It's the F something C. They just get they're getting more and more uh uh like it's getting harder and harder to do ads on YouTube because because uh, yeah. there's bad actors who like pretend like it's not an ad. Like all of the time, yeah. this happens. Um, every single time I do an ad, I make it very clear. This video is sponsored by Beep, and then I do the ad immediately after that, and then it's over, and then that's it. But now YouTube yeah. is like forcing people to put sponsored video in the very beginning, and that makes it look like. If I'm talking about a controller, it makes it look like I'm sponsored by that controller, which is bad because right. it, it, I'm not. Right. It's a review, you know. I'm sponsored by freaking. Well, uh, isn't there a difference uh, between like Helix mattress? Spons- is yeah, isn't there a difference between like a sponsored video and a video that has like a a sponsorship to it? There is. Like, if you're, but YouTube is starting to put them in the same boat. Okay. Because there's people who just do an ad read and don't say that it's an ad read, you know? Yeah. Or do a review that's sponsored. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, there's people who, like, break the rules a little bit and right. and, and make it right. harder for the rest of us. Um. Anyway. Uh, that's my rant. Uh, Seth Films said with six months love you guys doing an editing test for my new job I'm interviewing for uh, and so happy my editing overlapped with the podcast congratulations uh, hey. I hope uh, it's an editing test well it sounds like you got the job already so congratulations yeah <laughs> um, Latin Red thanks for the three months sup Bob and Will been a minute since I've popped into an actual live stream completely unrelated have you kept up on the Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard case? Uh, I actually have been. Um, her lawyers are trying to grab at straws so hard that one of them objected to his own question. I did see that. I, I did not see that. Uh, I, I am not actively following this case. This case just keeps popping up in my life unprompted. Like I will be going about my business and all of a sudden like 
from the Amber Heard and Johnny Depp case, <laughs> Amber Heard poops in the bed and blames it on the dog. That's a thing that happened. That's a thing that happened. So, so, uh, so, so I, I, I'm not like watching it religiously, but every once in a while I'll get suggested on YouTube and it's like an hour and a half deposition from somebody. And I'm like, Oh, I'm in baby. And I watch like the whole thing. (laughs) Oh God. So, uh, yeah, I've seen, I've seen too much of it at this point. Uh, and it is very interesting. Yeah. I mean, all I know, like, I don't, I don't want to pick a side because any side I pick is going to be wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, all I know is I think this will prove more than anything that it is possible that two people can be so toxic for each other. Yeah. <laughs> they wound up causing each other. They wound up both causing each other physical and emotional harm. Yes. I think more than anything, it shows that that is possible. From from what I've seen, it looks like the evidence points towards Johnny Depp is less toxic. However, you know, he did a lot of drugs and may yes. have had some questionable decisions on his own. There's video he of has him admitted- just like slamming like like glass bottles in the kitchen and whatever. So like he's yeah. not like completely innocent either. But it sounds like uh, he's more innocent than Amber is in this situation. Right. Uh so you, but yes, sure. it turns out relationships are complicated. More than one person could be wrong. Just like Gus right. Johnson. Have you heard of that controversy? <laughs> oh, uh, yes, but I don't remember like the specifics. I don't want to get like, into it, but basically okay. it sounds like everybody's an asshole in this situation. <laughs> um, yeah, so. Uh, that's my stance on big, super, super famous rich people problems. Right. Um, let's talk about, uh, the mega quest showcase. Why do I care? Uh, it's just, uh, they, they announced, uh, uh, Facebook or now meta formerly Facebook had a quest gaming showcase. They announced a whole bunch of new games for the quest, uh, two VR s- set up. Uh, including Ghostbusters VR. Uh, you can be a Ghostbuster in virtual reality now. Moss wow. Book 2. Moss was a very good game. Now it has a sequel. It's it's had well, a sequel. Exciting. It's been out. Well, now it's, com- well, now it's coming to Quest 2. So was now it not it's on Quest 2? No, it's coming uh, summer. Did I have the original Moss on my Quest 2 this whole time? Maybe. I did. You're right. No, it was the original. Wow. Okay. It's been on PSVR yeah. for a while. Has it? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Beat Saber electronic mixtape. It's an expansion to Beat Saber. Uh, Among Us VR is coming. That was a big announcement. The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners Chapter 2. Uh, Cities VR. Uh, Bone Lab, <laughs> which I think is a sequel to Boneworks. Yes, yeah. it is a uh, follow-up to Boneworks. Uh, NFL Pro Era, so for all you oh, football no. fans out there. Uh, oh, Ruins Magus. <laughs> Resident Evil 4, The Mercenaries. So the Mercenaries mode from Resident Evil 4 is finally coming to Resident Evil 4 VR. Damn. That's nice. Now you get the complete game. Also, you get new, challenge- new uh, goodies to unlock, such as Big Head mode and Black and White Classic Horror mode. So that'll be fun. And then uh, Red Matter 2, Espire 2, and that's it. Espire 2 looks Aspire 2 looks uh, really good. Yeah. It's like a Rainbow Six type uh, situation. Yeah. I'm, I'm I kind of want to try it. The only thing like the locomotion in games like this is going to freak me out. Yeah. So I, like to I mean it was just basically if you if you have a Quest 2 and you're looking for games to play, here's a bunch of them. <laughs> I'm glad they're doing Among Us VR because uh, there was a you know a knockoff Among Us VR game that was very popular. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it, it, this looks like it'd be a lot of fun in VR. Um, I really don't like that they call it the Meta Quest now. They should have kept it Oculus because I thought the whole reason they they started the Meta yeah. like like umbrella is so that that could be the parent company and there wouldn't be confusion what's owned by Facebook yeah. and what's not. Like so, it Oculus. should be Facebook oculus instagram yeah oculus was the company's name and then you just 
dropped it so you can have that be Meta Quest in addition to Meta, the parent company. It was a very, very poorly thought out strategy. I don't think Zuckerberg is very smart. No. I mean, he's smart, but he's not smart. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, that, that that was a, it's been a poor choice. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, last thing that we got to talk about is Ubisoft's getting bought out. What? I heard a little bit of rumors uh, about this. Oh, are you? I've re sorry, Bob. I've reached the free limit uh, for Bloomberg articles that I can read in a month. Don't worry, I cannot. Will. I still have mine. Uh, Assassin's Creed publisher Ubisoft, among other things, draws buyout interest. Uh, Ubisoft Entertainment SA, the video game publisher behind the Assassin's Creed franchise, is attracting preliminary takeover interest from buyout funds. People with knowledge of the matter said. Several private equity firms, including Blackstone Incorporated and KKR and Co., uh, have been studying the French business according to the people who asked not to be identified because the information is private. Aren't they French Canadian? Uh, or are they French French? You know, let me just I'll double check that. Ubisoft hasn't no, entered uh, into any serious negotiations with potential acquirers, and it's unclear whether its major shareholders is willing to pursue a deal. The people said, "The family." So of they Ubi are they are French French. They are oh. based in France. I did not know that. I thought they were based in Montreal. Uh, the family of Ubisoft chairman Yves Guillermo Guillermo. Good enough. <laughs> is the company's biggest investor with a 15% stake data compiled by Bloomberg show shares of Ubisoft have fallen 41% in Paris trading over the past year, giving it a market value of about 4.8 billion euros. That's 5.2 billion real money. Uh, deliberations <laughs> are at an early stage and there's no certainty. Any of the suitors will proceed with offers. The people said, Representatives of Blackstone and KKR decided uh, declined to comment. Ubisoft said in an emailed statement, it's built a, portf a strong portfolio and is ideally uh, positioned to capitalize on emerging opportunities amid rapid growth in the industry. The company declined to comment on any takeover interest. Ubisoft was founded in 1986 by five brothers from the Guillermo family. Uh, the company's shares have been battered over the past year amid concerns over delayed launches and lower productivity levels compared to peers and also shitty games. Let's not forget about that. No, also media, massive sexual harassment scandals. That also happened. French media giant Vivendi. I was going to bring this up. French media giant Vivendi SE agreed in 2018 to sell its stake in Ubisoft after its typical strategy of seeking creeping seeking creeping control failed to pan out. This was the hostile takeover that was about to happen to Ubisoft back in the day. Yeah. The exit was a victory for Ubisoft's leader Guillermo uh who sought to ward off a typical attempt a takeover attempt by Vivendi's billionaire backer Vincent Bol Bolor. Uh, uh, yeah, close enough. <laughs> Silent Mongoose says Eve Gimo. I think the yeah the proper French pronunciation is like Guillermo or something. Anyway, uh, so this is weird that they were trying to push off a hostile takeover just a few years ago, and now they're like, take it. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think this to me sounds like uh, the G Gimo family is yeah. uh, is retiring and they don't want anybody to yeah have it they, anymore. They, they want to so get they out. cash out. Yeah, uh, yeah. And that, and it's generally what that means. You saw the the buyout with Activision. They're like, look at all this money we have. These guys have money burning a hole in their pocket. Maybe we can get bought out by somebody. Very, yeah. within the realm of possibility that PlayStation might come in and be like, give us that because we need to compete against Microsoft that just bought fucking Activision. I mean, also Microsoft still got more money. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they. I mean, I know, that, I know the deal hasn't gone through yet with Activision, but they are sending close to $70 billion. I think they're good with the uh, game studios for now. <laughs> um, 
yeah, part of me feels like this is definitely a case of, you know, the Guillermo family of uh, Ubisoft's reputation is in the toilet because their games have been bad and not well received. Uh, they've been at the forefront of a lot of controversies in the games industry. Yeah, yes, including sexual harassment scandals and lawsuits, but also they're at the forefront of fucking NFTs in games that you know they're slowly realizing people don't want. Of uh, a lot of paid DLC and microtransactions are you know, for, I don't know Ubisoft are like the studio in that field and things like that. So it, it looks like this is a way for for the Gumos to divest their interest in it, get out while they still can without taking the company with them, I guess you could say. Yeah, I think now is a good time. Uh, yeah. Hopefully they'll make some better games after this. <laughs> yeah. the, the problem is like, uh, uh, like Circa in the chat says, all their franchises have been run into the ground. Uh, I've been burnt out yes. on friggin' Ubisoft games since for a really long time now. Uh, yeah. Hopefully they start making games that look a little different. Yeah, um, that's a big one. Uh, I miss when Tom Clancy games were top tier. I do too. Yeah, I miss when I, I miss, miss when my Tom, Rainbow Six. I miss when Tom Clancy games were different. You know, because like each one was different. Rainbow Six was different from Ghost Recon. Was different from Splinter Cell. Was different from Hawks. Um, but now <laughs> they're all they're all Far Cry. Yeah, it's very sad. Uh, but anyway, uh, I don't know. Buy Ubisoft stock, sell it. I don't know what you do in this situation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't think this has little to no effect on us gamers here. Um, no, definitely not. Anyway, that's all the news we have. Woo! We do have this, though. Do it! This is from uh, Hero Div Dividend, who says Elon Musk was able to buy Twitter because he doesn't spend five dollars on coffee every day. <laughs> That's good. That's actually funny. That's some news we didn't talk about. Elon Musk buying Twitter. Uh, so what does this mean? <laughs> nothing. It means literally uh, people yeah. are going nuts. It means literally nothing. I don't, I don't think I don't think Twitter as we know it is going to change substantially. No. I feel like if anything, there'll probably just be a few more loud people on here that you don't want to be on here. And that's about it. Here's here's my hot take. He keeps talking about free speech needs to happen. I agree that mm. uh Twitter needs to be a private company because I think all social media, if it's public it, they're forced to grow every year and yeah. if everybody has the platform there's no growth that can be had so in order to grow they have to start squeezing money out of the people who are already on the platform and you see a company like facebook that can't get any bigger than they already are yeah they start to go down the toilet um so i do agree that i think something like twitter should be treated like a like a public service which is the opposite of of public being a publicly traded company is what I mean. Like it shouldn't be publicly traded. It should be privately owned so that they don't have to grow to appease shareholders. Um, right. It should be treated like a public service. Um, but so I agree with that aspect. Uh, the whole angle that it needs to be protected uh, by f free speech. I got news for you. It already is. The only people who don't have free speech on Twitter are racist and violent people who yes. shouldn't be there anyway. Yes. Like, that's not what free speech is. Yeah. So, and that's still going to happen. They're still going to fucking get kicked off of Twitter. It's not like it's going to be the Wild West. I mean, it's already is the Twitter's already kind of the Wild West. Um, Nothing's going to change. I think I think Twitter's totally fine how it is now. I don't think all, all we're going to get is an edit button. And I don't even really agree that we should have that. Cause that I mean, be I do, because I, I, I write typos all the time. I have gold tweets that are ruined because there's, there's a A in the wrong spot. There needs to be a failsafe with it. Like, you can't maybe just have a couple characters that could be changed. Because uh, being able to 
tweet a tweet and then edit it like a few hours later to completely change the context of the tweet could be very dangerous because people retweet well, the, it and stuff. The fail safe would be, you know, seeing the edit history. True. That's, That's easy true. to do. That's very true. So like, like on Reddit. Yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. I, I saw something and I don't know how true this is, but I'm going to choose that. It's true. Okay. Um, a kid, like a, like a teenager, uh, created a Twitter account that tracks uh, where Elon Musk's private jet is in in the world. I have heard of and this. It, and, it use, and it uses publicly available data to post this information. So he's not doing anything illegal. Mm -hmm. uh, Elon Musk reportedly offered the kid $5,000 to shut down the Twitter account. And the kid said no. The next day was when he decided he was going to announce that he was going to buy Twitter. <laughs> so we'll see what happens with this kid's account in the next few days. I didn't hear that part. But I did yeah. hear that there's a lot of times when Elon Musk has uh, erred on the side against free speech. Um, yeah. So here's what we're going to do. Everybody on this um, Twitter, everybody on this Twitch stream and listening at home uh, on the various audio platforms we post this on. If you have a Twitter account... Just make fun of Elon Musk. Just just make a joke about him. It could be a, a decent joke. It could be a nice joke. It could be a very mean joke. Just make a joke about him on Twitter. And we'll <laughs> see where your account is in a year. Then we'll know. <laughs> yeah. Or uh, was it? didn't you say you like joined a Twitter like counterpart? Or like a Twitter right, a, yeah, a, a knockoff? I, Mastodon. So there, there's another social media platform called Mastodon. It's been around for a very long time. It's it's now starting to get a lot of traction because of this. The, the whole point of Mastodon, it's like it's smaller communities and it's more curated communities specifically for like you and your interests. Um, and it's a, it's a lot more aggressive and it's, you know, don't be racist, don't be sexist, don't be fascist, don't be violent mentality. Um, so I wanted to like, you know, join and just have an account just to, you know, see what, the, you know, see how the other half live. The fucking app doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, my, you know, loading a comment took forever. And like, there's no, like no timeline for anything. I can't search like to follow anyone. So that might've been a mistake. <laughs> Do it stink said, was it like Amino? Remember that? And then he said that shit sucked. Barely. <laughs> Amino was like Discord kind of. It was, it was all right. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was one of our first sponsors on the channel. Oh, um, I remember that. Yeah. Let's also not forget this Twitter account. Thank you, Travel, for reminding me. Uh, posting Italian Elon Musk until he sells this site. I buy <laughs> a the Twitter for $41 a billion. I don't pay a the taxes. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I gotta follow that. <laughs> uh, anyway, now we're in the chat talking. Well, no, I'm sorry. Now we're on last week's comments on the YouTube video so that we can talk to the people who are podcast listeners or YouTube watchers. Yes. Unlive people. <laughs> we have Keyholes who says the thing about Fat Thor <laughs> was that it played <laughs> for cheap laughs. And as a metaphor for failure, you can see how that would suck for fat viewers, right? And it was a body shape that was gone by the next movie when the metaphor was no longer useful. Not all represent representation is good representation. Also on Natalie Portman's character, she was annoyed because she was promised a female director and a decent 3D role. Uh, and what she got was a dude bro who turned her role into yet another damsel in distress. It was so reductive of what her storyline could have been. I generally enjoy Marvel, but they fuck up a lot and it's really disappointing. Uh, that sounds very plausible with the Natalie Portman situation. No, that that is uh, what happened. Uh, Patty Jenkins was supposed to direct Thor The Dark World and she left over creative differences. So they got the guy who directed Terminator Genesis. That's a shitty movie uh, to do <laughs> Thor: The Dark World, and like it, it shows like there he did not really have an understanding of what you know Jane Foster was or could have been. Um, so her role really was like 
significantly reduced. I don't blame her for not wanting to be a part of any more Marvel films. What better way to bring her back than to say, hey, do you want to be Thor? Right. Yeah. Who so would say no to that? Uh, as for the Fat Thor no. thing, uh, yeah, it's a metaphor for his failure because he was a fucking buffed rip guy. I don't think you can be like, <laughs> now you're fat. Uh, it's good, though. <laughs> You know, like, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I I understand that it was played for laughs and like that, that could be seen as like a problem for some viewers. And I understand that, that it's a sensitive subject at the same time, th you know, if you really want to show somebody like gaining weight is a sign of depression mm -hmm. and he was clearly depressed and he clearly just did not care about anything anymore. And yeah, he let himself go. And that was one of the clearer visual signs of showing that on screen. Take the most jacked Avenger and make him not so. And and then uh, also like like yeah, it was for cheap laughs. But at but then at the end, it's for cheap laughs and to show that he's like a broken man now. And then at the end, he's a fucking badass again and st and fat yeah. still. So like they show that even yeah. though he had all of this, he can overcome it. And, and and not have a resolution of of the and, physical aspect. And at the same time, like yeah, some of the other characters had cheap laughs. Like Rocket made a lot of jokes towards him, but he was like him as a character was not funny. Like mm -hmm. there was a lot of like he had a lot of like pain and sadness to him. Yeah, like throughout the movie, and you can clearly see that. So while yes, I will I will agree that. It probably could have been handled better. I think the idea and the intent was not done, like, in, like is not done from a hateful place. It's not done from a spiteful place. It was done as a more more of a way to clearly illustrate how somebody has fallen. It, it could have been a lot worse. They could have been like at the end. They could have been like, "I'm Jack now. I'm all better." But they didn't. <laughs> They showed him overcoming it while still being in that place. So yeah, uh, yeah, I think that's that's I, I liked it. I liked that as a as yeah. a as a skinny man, <laughs> uh, as a, as a guy who's just struggled with his weight for years. I can tell you, I I I liked what they did with it, and I understand why he's getting uh, jacked again in Thor four, and they show they're showing the process. So yeah. Uh, the Lou the Lunatic. Oh, you, what's his name? Lou the Lunatic. <laughs> Out of all the GBA games leaked in the screenshot, I'm legitimately most excited for Kudu Kudu Kududian. <laughs> I hear you don't. I still don't even know what that game is. Uh, um, let's look it up. Uh, I might D be confusing it with something else. D Linton says Nintendo is really working hard to pull with a nostalgia, but I only care about Kirby. I still want more copy abilities in the Forgotten Lands. There's a lot of content in the Forgotten Lands. Uh, maybe there'll be some DLC or something. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's already a lot of stuff in that game. And there's a decent amount of copy abilities, and they all have three different levels that you can upgrade. So uh, there's a lot. Uh, Kuru Kuru Kuruin was a puzzle video game developed by aiding and de developed by aiding and published by nintendo for the game boy advance released in japan in 2001 and europe and australia in the same year as a launch title for the game boy advance what, uh, wasn't it just poyo poyo didn't we figure this out no uh oh. kuru kuru kuruin is a uh the player controls a slowly spinning stick <laughs> called okay. a her uh hellerian or a helicopter in the European localization and must maneuver through a series of mazes without touching the walls. The player controls the direction and speed of movement, but the task is made difficult as the stick rotates constantly. Okay. Weird. So it's a maze game. Yeah. Uh, Joy Josh Foy says, just knowing my favorite game of all time, Golden Sun will be playable will be possible to play on the switch makes me so happy well hold on they're testing it it doesn't mean yeah. that you're gonna get it that's another game that it's you know uh when was the last time that was released because that's that you only got like two games out of that franchise and then that was it yeah 
Uh, yeah, there were only two games. It was the first one was in two thousand and one, and the second one, Dark Dawn, was uh two thousand and two. And they, they never re released it, right? Was it on Virtual Console? I don't think so. That's a franchise that had that has gotten zero love, and honestly, people are oh, as pissed about it as they should be. What? Wait, did I screw up? Like, how come we got? How come everybody's going nuts about Earthbound and nobody gives a shit about Golden Sun? Yeah, uh, Golden Sun. The first one was a 2001 game on the Game Boy Advance. Golden Sun: The Lost Age was a 2002 game on the Game Boy Advance, and then Dark Dawn is the third installment. And was released in 2010 on the Nintendo DS. Uh, Smash Prime Prime Man says Wii U and yeah, Virtual Console. Yeah, Virtual Console. Um, why did my camera freeze now? Oh boy! Oh, don't. I'm just gonna keep reading this. Uh, SR uh, says yeah. really doubt that Odd World would have had anywhere near four million on its own. I know I wouldn't have bought it, and I still haven't played it after getting it on PS Plus. Yeah. Uh, I'm afraid to restart my camera. It might crash <laughs> all of OBS, so I feel like I should just do the rest of it while I'm frozen. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying to find like the total sales of the whole Odd World series, because I know it's not... Like four million is probably what every game has done. I think we <laughs> determined that last year, uh, last week. We determined that. It, yeah, it was like I think four million was the whole franchise. Yeah. Um. Now we're in the chat. McCrib McRib King says, "Oh my God, seriously, with Kirby, I beat the Penguin guy and thought I was done, and not even fifty percent." The the Penguin guy. Oh, that was uh. King DDD, you idiot. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I thought that was the boss. And uh, no, there's like a like a whole another half. And then you fight him again. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Bob, are you a VTuber now? Sure. Bob is whatever you want him to be. That's not true. <laughs> Charge me extra for the mainline Pokemon games, you coward. Yeah, I know. They should really do something with the mainline Pokemon games. Yeah. They're missing out there. At least, they, I mean, they, you could say that about their entire back catalog, honestly. Uh, Medicine just says, Will, if you want to play Knuckles in Sonic Origins, you have you just have to connect the Sonic and Knuckles cart between your <laughs> Switch and your digital download. <laughs> I'm sure I could do that. We still have our Sonic and Knuckles cart, so I'll just we make do. a just make a friggin' what should we call it? I'll make something that can connect Genesis games to your Switch. McRib so. King says, I said Penguin Guy in case I got spoiler backlash. Oops, now I get the spoiler backlash. <laughs> uh, uh, Will, did you take? Did you like Tom King's run on Batman? Yes, I did. I know a lot of people hated it, and I think they're all wrong. Because two things. One, I think it does play better if you read it uh, all at once collected, which is what how, how I did it. Um, but also, too, he's doing a lot, or he did a lot of like weird things with Batman and out and weird and out there things that were meant to test, break, and rebuild him. And I think also, I've I've noticed this with Tom King's run on Batman and with The Dark Knight Rises, both of those, uh want to make Batman happy. And I don't think people want to see Batman happy because they feel like if he's happy, then he's not Batman. And that is not necessarily true. Batman can be happy and still be Batman. That's misery is not what makes him Batman. Okay. Uh, anything else in the chat I want to see? Um, uh, Tetra shot. I feel like I said this too many times, but would you get a Sega Mega Drive Genesis console or Sonic Origins? Oh, would you? If I wanted to play the games, would I buy a whole ass console or just get Sonic <laughs> Origins? Just get Sonic Origins. It'll be much yeah, easier. Yeah, I mean that. That's another thing. Like people will say, like, oh, if you have the original games on Genesis, what's the problem? 
playing gen playing an actual Genesis in 2022 is not the easiest thing in the world to do. Mm -hmm. A lot of TVs will not accept the signal from a Genesis as is. You'll have to get like an upscaler, like a retro tank or an OSSC or a frame meister. You have to get better cables for it because the Genesis has one of the worst composite outputs of any system of the time. You have to make sure your Genesis works. You have to make sure the cartridges are cleaned. Yeah, yeah uh, the Genesis also yeah. has a Red Ring of Death style situation where uh, yeah. the Genesis 2, I think. Uh, yeah, the power adapter, just you just can't connect it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it just doesn't get power anymore. Um, mm -hmm. And that just rots out. It just gets shitty after a while. Yeah, you, yeah, you can repair it, but like, how many people are going to know that they have to repair it? Uh, it is a very easy repair, but uh, yeah. it's still you know a pain in the ass. Anyway, uh, that's all the time we have for today. I have to go back to playing Animal Crossing New Leaf on my Nintendo DS. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you could do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den Podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get this show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Guys, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. You have to look at Will while I talk. I'm very sorry. Uh, I'll be streaming probably Thursday. Oh, Thursday! I'm going to try my best to get Nintendo Switch Sports, and we'll play it on Thursday, Ooh. probably with Jackson. Um, until then, I've got a lot of work to do. Uh, how about you go watch Wood right now? He's trying weird free Nintendo Switch games. Uh, so go watch him. Uh, I Plastic will wood. see you later. I got to work on a PAX vlog. You all better watch it because it's got a sponsor in it and I feel like it's going to do bad. Uh, this <laughs> channel has follower or subscriber only chat. So does that mean I can't raid him? Huh. Well, it you says have I have the wolf in its rating. Yeah. Oh, okay. No. Uh, I, I don't. I don't know. Weird. I don't know how to start that. I don't know how to start the raid. All right, whatever. Yeah. Go watch Wood. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Uh, goodbye, everybody. Bye.